You know, you could gauge the market's uh, movement this week really by watching the dollar because generally the dollar's been weaker this week. The exception was yesterday when we had tariff discussions. Predictably, the dollar went up and predictably the usual uh, items associated with tariff talk went down. Big industrials and we saw uh, emerging markets week. Take a look at today what we've got. And generally, again, you've got the weaker dollar. So all week, metal stocks have been doing better. Emerging markets have been doing better. Uh, the South African, the Brazilian ETF are higher. There's EEM, that's the second line. Commodity-based uh, sectors like energy generally have been doing better this week. Uh, and I think a very important component of why we've held up 1.5% uh, or so on the S&P this week is tech. Semi has, semiconductors are back again this week. Uh, that's big support for the market. And we had something a little unusual. Uh, retail is not doing as well today as you heard everybody talking about. A little uh, a, a tough day today with uh, Gap beating on the comp, uh, missing on the comp store numbers. Uh, we had Foot Locker missing on the comp store numbers. Uh, Ross store was a weaker forecast, but Ross is at a new high along with uh, Nordstrom. So they've been holding up pretty well. And Buckled overall had pretty good team retailer there, pretty good numbers. So mixed for the week, Target, Walmart, William Sonoma, pretty good, and a few misses here today. The market trends, though, overall, uh, look, I agree with everybody, no rollover here. Uh, we're up a half a percent for the week. The volatility, we're sitting with the VIX at 11 right now, uh, near 12. The dollar's been weaker, generally. Retail's been a big leader, although we may have pushed retail as far as we can. Semis are back. Commodity-based stocks are been stronger through week. And the laggards are really defensive names. Staples, utilities, and real estate all have been to the downside. Nobody worries that much when they're the market, the market laggards. Elsewhere, uh, we've got Morningstar's uh, semi-annual report on how stock pickers are doing against the passive guys. And not surprisingly, it's pretty dismal again. But this has been a story for many, many years. Here's the numbers. 36%, only 36% of active fund managers in stock funds, these are stock funds, outperformed their passive peers in the last 12 months. That's the period ending in June. That's pretty bad. It's worse because a year ago it was 43% and that was pretty bad. Uh, people debate this endlessly about active versus passive stock picking and why can't active guys outperform, but there are a number of reasons that are uh, very obvious that make it difficult for them to outperform. Number one is cash. If you've got 5% cash on the sidelines in a rising market, that's a performance lag. Secondly, you could have a wrong mix of investments, and it could be as simple as I'm underweight Apple, and if you are, that could be a performance drag. But the most important reason you get these underperformances is fees. The highest hurdle an active manager's face is their own fees, their own compensation. It's very simple. If you're charging 1.5% and the competition is charging, 0.5 percent over time that is a huge difficult hurdle to overcome here morningstar's conclusion and this is not a new one they've been saying this for a long time investors would greatly improve their odds of success by favoring low cost funds which succeeded far more often than high cost funds over the long term and mike i would note that morningstar does not just mean uh, uh, active investors they're talking about active and passive investors you find a funds that you believe in go for the lower cost fund whether it's active or passive and their studies indicate very clearly the outperformance long term.